All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode number 281 of the Restoring Rapport podcast. We are super excited for the content we've got planned out for you guys. As always, this is a podcast for young believers who are pursuing the goal of marriage and family and trying to get married as young as possible in a healthy way. I'm your host, Seth Hensley. I come on twice a week, every week on Thursday and Sunday to discuss not only the benefits of getting married young, but I attempt to equip and encourage you in your pursuit of that goal. And today, we are going to be reviewing a story that comes on the Dr. John Deloney show about a, a parent who's concerned about her daughter wanting to get married at a young age. And I'm going to review kind of J Dr. John's reaction to that, as well as the parents, the fears that they're having uh, for, you know, giving their blessing to this young couple and kind of the social stigmas uh, of getting married young. And I'm going to kind of teach you to overcome all of those things in your pursuit of getting married young again, because as I've argued in hundreds of episodes before this one, getting married is you can it can be a great decision, a well-informed decision with several benefits and it can be an awesome road for you. I got married as young as I possibly could and could not imagine having lived the past year of my life unmarried to my spouse. So definitely would recommend it if uh, it is something that you're willing to work for. Uh, getting married young has its difficulties, just like everything in life. And choosing to get married young is simply to choose the difficulties of getting married young over the difficulties of remaining unmarried longer. Because by all means, that road has difficulties as well. And so really excited for this. Um, Hoping, hopefully, we'll get a, you know, a, a what, what, what should I say, not an antagonistic take from Dr. John on, you know, people who just want to get married and spend as more of their life with their, their partner. Um, and, and oftentimes, sadly, what I see within the church especially uh, is that people react poorly um, and do not enjoy it uh, and do not enjoy hearing the news that people around them are decided to get married young. And they often try, sadly, to dissuade them from what I would say, you know, is God's calling on their life. And um, getting married young can, and again, just definitely be a wonderful thing. And again, there are ways to do it wrong. I never said that, you know, there are no ways to get married young that are bad. I just said that getting married young can be an awesome, well-informed decision. So let's go ahead and jump into this episode. Really excited to see what Dr. John says to this parent. All right, let's go out to Fort Collins, Colorado and talk to Brian. What's up, Brian? Hey, Dr. Deloney. Glad to uh, be talking with you. Glad to talk to you, man. What's up? Uh, okay. 17-year-old daughter, uh, graduating in May. She has been dating her boyfriend for a year and a half. <laughs> He's also 17. He's also graduating in May. They want to get married. Oh, boy. Next August. They'll be 18. By then, they are both planning to go to college, different schools, same area. and. Uh, my wife and I have a lot of challenges, as you might imagine, <laughs> yeah. around this. <laughs> On and, your behalf, I do too. So, got it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, one one of the many questions we have is uh, how much we ought to be paying for an actual wedding ceremony next summer. <sighs> uh, I have an idea for you. How about nothing? <laughs> and here's, and, and I don't mean, I don't say that to, you know, try and discourage this daughter from getting married, but I do say, um, you know, particularly if you want to get married young, you might want to consider, hear me out here, not having an expensive wedding and instead asking people to forward, forward any money they planned on donating to that expensive wedding instead into your savings for a house. Hear me out here. A lot. Some, now, some some girls, some guys really have this idea in their head that they want a big wedding. They want this big event where all their friends and family come in, and it's basically costs thousands of dollars to pull one of those off um, in the way that they're envisioning. And you know, I would just recommend, guys. And I know, I know this might seem not romantic to some of you, but I'm going to make it seem more romantic here. Um, choosing a big wedding, you know, spending thousands and thousands of dollars on just a few hours uh, when you could take that money and put, you know, a substantial portion of, of savings towards a down, down payment on a house, um, I think might be a less romantic thing to do. And sure, you're going to make a great memory on that day. Um, but if you really love this person and your goal isn't to just make one memory with them, but thousands, and you want to spend more of your life with them instead of less of your life with them, then saving up for, you know, a huge event might not be the way to go. And, you know, this dad here in this situation is finding himself in a position where his daughter's wanting to get married 
Um, let's assume they're a believing family. Uh, and he, th- he believes that that's a calling God's put on her life. She's chosen that way, that road, not only to live a, you know, a healthy sexual life, but also to, you know, spend as much of her life as possible in service to her husband. And he's doing the same for her. Let's say this is an extremely godly young couple um, who are very mature, even despite their young age, and who are willing to put in the work to overcome the obstacles that getting married young is going to throw at them. Um, the dad's going to want to help them with that, but he's, he's finding himself in this dilemma where he's saying, wow, I, I had not p- prepared, I had not saved money for my daughter uh, to get married at this time in her life. Traditionally, the bride's family does pay for the wedding. Um, and so he's finding himself under pressure here about how much money he needs to dish out in order to uh, help them pursue this, this goal God's calling for him. And I don't even know, he hasn't gotten to the point whether or not he said um, if he thinks that getting married young is a good decision for his daughter or not, but let's just assume he thinks it is a good idea. He's just under pressure right now because he's thinking he has to shell out thousands and thousands of dollars just by next year. And that's not much time to save. And so, um, you know, I understand the position that parents might find themselves in often, but, um, what I would encourage you to do, I mean, just my own personal story, my parents could not wait for me to get married, um, because I was, it was very difficult. It was more difficult for me to live you know, the single life in a healthy way than it was for me to get married. Uh, and so I was, I was basically struggling, um, for a longer time to live a healthy single life. And they, along with myself, just realized that, Hey, this guy needs to be married and, and pursuing the goal that God's called him to, instead of just basically elongating this, this singleness destination, um, for longer than it's intended to be. And so they were really all for that. Um, I do understand being surprised and shocked and, especially if you have a daughter, um, being, you know, feeling pressure to make a big wedding. But let me just, uh, let me talk to the young people who who are listening to this for a second. The target audience of this show, young believers, ages 18 to 24, who are looking to get married really soon. Do you want to spend, you know, $7,000 on one day? Do you really want to do that? Um, and yes, it would be beautiful. Yes. You get awesome pictures. Yes. People would all witness your amazing, you know, lifelong commitment to this person, but compare that to just going to the courthouse, having the witnesses still there, having your family still there to witness your, you know, commitment to one another, even having a cheap celebration in whatever free venue you can come across. Um, and you still get all of that, but you don't have to pay pretty much anything so that all of that wedding money that your parents would have to pay, they can then bless you with as a gift and people who want to bless you um, you know, with other things, you can still have a wedding registry or a shower or all this, and you can still get gifts and people can still come behind you and support you in your decision, but you're basically not spending a huge amount of money on, a, on a, an event that lasts a few hours. And instead, you can put that money towards the home that you're going to build with your your spouse and live in for the rest of your life. I mean, to me, there's no question there. I would rather spend way less on a wedding and more on hear me out, young people. And I wish I would have done this a lot of, and I'm telling you, looking with the benefit of hindsight, this is a great idea. And I, and I loved my wedding. My wedding was perfect. Laney and I didn't have to pay much for our wedding at all. And it was a beautiful thing. We're so grateful. But I'm saying if you don't, if, you, if you're not dead set on having that, then you can have a huge, you know, blessing um, from the people around you and still not spend that much money. You can still have them present for your special day. You could even still do a celebration at a free venue with close family and friends. Um, it's just that you wouldn't have that huge wedding price tag and you wouldn't be dropping that money so early on something that doesn't last. Um, and to me, I would just, I would rather spend that on something that does last like a home. Um, because then that is an, that's a super romantic thing to do because that's where you're going to be spending all your time with this person. That's where you're going to be, you know, having children. That's where you're going to be hosting events with friends and family. Um, and so, you know, I just think the payout is much bigger. So consider that guys, instead of having a big wedding, getting married young can be really cheap. You don't have to have a big wedding. You can go to the courthouse, you can have witnesses, you can do a celebration if you want with a free venue and not as many people there. So the catering bill is cheaper. And, um, you can have the celebration that way. So that's what I would recommend to this dad. Um, and that's what I will recommend to my children. You know, if I have daughters, I will of course want to help them with, you know, their special day in any way that I can. But what I'm going to counsel and encourage them to do if they listen to kind of my advice and what I've been through is spend less on the day and more on your life with this person. 
So pe- money that people are going to planning to give you for a wedding, I would ask them to give to you for something in the long run, like a home uh, specifically. And so consider that if you feel so led, but let's continue to see what Dr. John says to this dad who's concerned about money. I have, I have an immediate response to that. And before I give it, I want to talk through like, how have your conversations been up until now? Like, how is this con, how is this this conversation addressed? Why do they want to get married so young? What are they? So what's the hurry? Like, walk me through that. I want to just briefly interrupt here, Dr. John, I can tell you why they should want to get married young. There are bad reasons that, that they could want to get married young. Um, namely that they're just swept off their feet with infatuation. They actually haven't thought it through and they're making an emotional decision um, without actually thinking through the consequences of their actions. That would be a bad reason to get married young. A good reason to get married young would be sitting down and thinking, okay, do I want to spend more of my life with the person I love the most in the world or less of my life with that person? To me, the answer is clearly you want to spend as much of your life as possible with your significant other if you have a great connection with them. If you don't have a great connection with them, then you're not going to say yes to that question. But let's assume you have a great connection with them. You're going to want to spend as much of your life as possible with that person. Number two, uh, the only context for a healthy sexual relationship is within the context of a committed lifelong covenant. And so if these two young believers are hosts to a God-given sex drive, then the only solution, I would argue, that is moral And the only way that they can fulfill God's design for them as sexual beings in a correct and appropriate and healthy way is within the context of marriage, then they're making a great decision because they're choosing God's road for a healthy sexual life. And I would argue the best sexual health, uh, the, the, the most fulfilling sexual road that they could have for their future, um, instead of, you know, other roads down perverted and immoral, uh, paths to sexual fulfillment that leave you in the end empty and with a less than the best experience. So they're really making a wise decision there. Number three, um, another good reason to get married young is you're, you're maturing together rather than separate. Guys, I can't tell you how many people <laughs> I've seen fight and you know struggle in marriage because they went into marriage having matured as an individual with their own preferences and habits instead of basically going into marriage while their, their lives are still malleable and they don't have, you know, basically selfish tendencies that have hardened and, and, you know, basically petrified over the course of a decade into their adult life. Uh, if you try to smash two pre-existing, fully developed lives together, there's going to be some friction, some tension, some violence even there. But if you, and there's going to be, it's going to require some serious maturity for those two people to actually decompose and break down their lives, deconstruct their own individual selves in order to better live as a whole one unit, as Paul describes in the Bible. And so if you, if you marry young while you're still malleable, while you don't have extremely, you know, petrified habits, personal habits that you then have to deconstruct upon entering marriage. If you get married when you're soft, basically, it's much easier to merge lives and you get to grow up together. Um, you get to, you know, learn together rather than separate. A lot of the hardest challenges that I went through in my life would have been much easier if I had a partner. I can't, I can't even count the number of things that I sadly went through alone that were serious challenges because I was not able to, or did, chose not to get married younger than I did. And, you know, many of you will ask me, you know, do you, now that you've been married for a year and a half coming up on a year and a half, Do you, have you changed your mind about, you know, the benefits of getting married young? And my answer is absolutely not. Absolutely not. I recommend it now just more than ever. In fact, (laughs) I would get, I've gotten married younger than I did uh, if it were up to me. And if I had met my wife sooner, of course, I'm not saying you should just marry, you know, somebody just to get married young. I'm saying that if you have somebody that you really love and you really care about, and you know, you want to spend the rest of your life with, and you know, that person matches your investment, commitment, interest, everything then it's fool. It's a foolish to wait. You're wasting time. You're wasting time. And all the excuses that people give, you know, lack of financial preparation, missing out on your season of fun, you know, living single for longer, traveling, all of those are basically to me seem like selfish reasons to avoid marriage. They seem like an immature person's attitude towards marriage. uh, And they seem to be given by people who are not in great marriages themselves and therefore would not recommend to their colleagues that they love um, the, the road of marriage. People who do have great marriages, you'll notice, will recommend to people that marriage is a great thing and that getting married young and spending as much of your time as possible with your spouse is also a great thing. 
So let's continue to see what this dad says, though. Uh, Dr. John basically posed the question to him, you know, what led up to this moment? What are their attitudes towards marriage? Which I think is a great question. As a counselor, he's probably, and a therapist, and a, you know, a psychologist probably, he's probably going to come at this from a data standpoint. And the data, the data for getting married young is is not exactly what you would think it is. And I'm aware of the data that is against getting married young. There is data out there, peer reviewed studies that do suggest that getting married young increases your likelihood for divorce. Again, I would, I would excuse those cases by saying, yeah, of course there are because people again, enter, you know, marriage at a young age for wrong reasons. Those exist. Like I said, you know, just rushing into something without thinking about it, making an emotional and a superficial fickle decision that they then change their mind on, you know, um, people do these things all the time. And that's the people who, you know, you know, six weeks into their marriage are trying to get divorced is people who can't make up their mind and who are notoriously poor decision makers. But if these kids are mature and, you know, they've put in the work and they're willing to go through the hardship for the sake of the joy set before them, as scripture would say, and they're willing to pick up their cross at, in order to carry it with their partner and, and build a strong connection with their partner, I say, absolutely go for it, man. Uh, you know, you're going to be eight, the, the couple in question is going to be, they're 17. They're going to be 18 next year. I would absolutely go for it. Absolutely go for it. And here's the thing. The early you, the earlier you start putting in the work to get married, the earlier you start working, the earlier you start saving, the easier your transition into adulthood is going to be. And so basically what, sadly, what we're doing in modern culture by discouraging people to get married until they're 40 uh, by the way, for those of you who are new to the show, the average age of first marriage in this country, the United States, as of, you know, this pre, this current decade, uh, the average age of first marriage for men is uh, 27. I'm sorry, the average age for women is 27. And the average age for guys is 30, 29, 29 to 30. 60 years ago, you know, in 1960, the average age of first marriage for women was 20. And the average age of first marriage for men was 23. I think that is a much better age at which you to get married. But we've sort of created a perpet perpetual immature children in the world today who instead of working and doing hard things for their future with a partner are just basically choosing a life of ease and pursuing their own individual interests rather than thinking about other people or their future. And so I think we need to be very careful, uh, and, you know, to, you know, in encouraging people to postpone marriage because marriage is the best mature that we have in the world today. Marriage and parenthood are the maturers of mankind. You cannot be as mature as a single person as you can be as a parent and a married person. It is impossible because your capacity, your standard changes when you get, when you become a parent or a spouse, you have more people to look out for than yourself. You're responsible for things. You have to provide and care for people, right? And so if, if that's, what's going to be asked of you in marriage and parenthood, then that's going to basically force maturity. Your choice upon entering marriage and parenthood is going to be either suffer or mature. And so marriage, marriage matures people because there's no way out without suffering. You don't leave a marriage without suffering. And so what it's meant to do is incentivize and motivate you to mature in order to have a happy and wonderful marriage. But sadly, we have people who are not not basically get, making their season of singleness uncomfortable. And so they're remaining perpetual children into their 30s and 40s. Let's see what Dr. John has to say here. Hopefully, he does not encourage this couple to remain unmarried for any length of time and instead is, you know, encourages them and basically says, you can do this. It's going to be hard, but I would I would hope you, um, you know, are able to mature, mature yourself to the point that you're willing to make that decision. That's what I want to hear him say. Let's see what he says, though. Yeah, right. Um, conversations have been plentiful. Okay. I think they've been most everything's on the table. Okay. Um, honesty around this is a struggle. Uh, I am scared. Yeah. Just shared that with both of them the other night. I said, I'm not angry. I'm scared. And that's what you're seeing yeah. uh, for your future because our, our goal is for them to be successful. There you go. If they're going to get married. And w we think um, there's maybe a better time in life to get to start with better odds, if I will. Sure. Uh, yeah, so the conversations have, have been good. It's been back and forth. It's starting to feel a little bit like it's a compromise or a negotiation. I would just also interject here to that, Dad. He, you say you want them to be successful and that you're concerned that the time for marriage might not be right now in their life. 
and that it might be easier and they might have quote unquote better odds of success in the future. And, and I would ask you success at what? Success at spending more time together? Because that's certainly not true. Success at, you know, starting when they have a better chance to merge their lives together while they're still malleable? Because that's certainly not true. So you're talking about success probably in a financial sense or in a sense of bringing up divorce statistics, which, yes, are a concern. But again, how are your children entering this, this union? Are they, you know, you, you can evaluate them. You're their parent. Be honest with yourself. Are they a mature person who's making a well-informed decision or are they just rushing in blindly to something that they don't understand? Both of those scenarios are possible. So it's really, you have to know your children and sort of decide what they're doing because, um, you know, and it's, it's important to know your children because if you're, if you're holding them back from making a really mature decision, something that will improve, you know, their own personal maturity and, and great great in their capacity to love each other well then you know that's you don't want to do that you don't want to halt them in their pursuit of that but if you're halting them from jumping off of a you know a bridge because they aren't they don't know what they're doing then that is something good to do so you as parents just kind of need to know your own children right and um you know as far as this the odds of a successful marriage again I would just bring back, bring it back up to you. What do you define a successful marriage as? Do you find, I, I, when I ask myself that question, I think of a couple who loves spending time together and loves each other so much that they want to do as much of their life as possible together and whether the hardships that come, you know, together rather than separate. And so that's what I imagine when I think of a successful marriage. And that would, that would mean getting married as young as you possibly could. Right. Um, and so let's continue to see what Dr. John says though negotiation with the timeline um, and money's coming up, as you might imagine, they, they don't have any <laughs> and, and they're not going to have any being in right. school full time. Right. Um, man. Um, I, I don't need to run through the, the data with you. You know, statistically, this is going to be a tough one. Okay. Yes. Um, I think right now there's, there's kind of a two prong approach. Number one is the one you're taking, which I absolutely think is right. You're meeting with both of them, both of them. Right. And, um, um, I do think Dr. John has a great point there while he runs this ad, um, that is important to, for there to be open communication between parents and adults or uh, parents and their uh, children who are moving into adulthood uh, throughout this process. Because again, these young people, like he said, usually don't start with much money or knowledge or wisdom as far as what they're getting into. And so to have knowledgeable mentors in your life who have done this is a, you know, totally valuable thing that young people need to have. So they, that I would recommend if my children came to me and wanted to do something like this, I would be, you know, asking them things like, okay, who are the people who have done this successfully that, you know, you really respect in your life that you can go to and ask for help at navigating these new waters? I wouldn't dis dissuade them. I wouldn't discourage them. Instead, I would say, hey, yeah, I definitely understand why you're doing this. Um, you value your relationship with this person, and that's that's a great reason to enter a marriage. And so you're looking to make your odds uh, to not not odds because that implies that they have no will in the outcome of their own marriage, which is false. I'm going to say it like this. Uh, they're wanting to go into marriage equipped to handle the struggles that will inevitably come. So I, if my daughter or my son came to me and asked me these questions, I would immediately begin, you know, facilitating meetings with people who had done, who had gotten married young and had a great marriage. I would immediately begin pointing them to mentors who had basically done what my children wanted to do successfully in order to hook them up with the knowledge and wisdom necessary to help them avoid the potholes that are coming their way. Because I'm not denying that getting married young is, you know, difficult. It absolutely is. Just like anything you do in life is difficult if it's of any significance whatsoever. Um, and so nobody's arguing that here. What I am saying is that, um, you know, anything in life of great value with great reward has great risk, has great problems that you're going to have to go through and challenges that you have to go through in order to get the reward that you're looking for more time with your spouse, a healthy sexual life, um, the ability to mature together, to grow up together and face challenges together rather than separate. Those are the big pros for getting married young. And so, um, you know, if you really want those things, you need to be having mentors who can help you get those things and who can help you with the challenges that are going to come your way. I would say that to my child instead of trying to dissuade them or saying, I don't have enough money again, because marriages are, weddings are not necessary. Marriage is 
okay? And I'm gonna make that extremely clear to my children. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars on a day. That is not necessary. That is a cultural tradition that is beautiful and has meaning and has you know lots of pros to it. But are those pros, think about it and sit down and talk to the Holy Spirit and the mentors in your life and ask yourself, do I want those pros more than I want the pros of putting that money towards a house? Do I want those pros? Is that going to help me and my spouse more than that money would elsewhere? That's what I would ask this dad. And that's what I would say to my kids too, is I would point them towards mentors, remind them that it does not have to be expensive to get married young and kind of facilitate their, their entrance into that season because I believe it's something important. And this is what I will say to my children who, when they come to me with this question, hopefully one day. And um, let's see what Dr. John would say though. So far, he hasn't really given a statement yes or nay, uh, yay or nay parents have to say about this uh school's a priority uh for sure and seemingly less bothered by the timeline okay um as long as the plan for education and you know succeeding there continue uh i think we have different outlooks on overall financial support Mm -hmm. uh for them um And those have been separated into here, you know, what's school financial support and what is you're deciding to get married at 18 financial support look like, like a living. Right. Um, So it sounds like the boys' parents are, you know, I would imagine more either willing or able to support the new couple with a place of living. So they may offer to their son once he gets married to live with them if they have a large house or something or maybe in a flat or above their garage, or if they have a separate building for this, they would offer that to the newly wed couple. And whereas the daughter's parents here seems more, seem to be more concerned about how the young couple is going to make, you know, a living financially. Um, and it does get tricky here because if they're both wanting to go to school, then if they're both going to school full time, um, they're not going to be making money, right? And so, could, because they're going to school to get a degree that will help them make money, which again, by the way, college is not necessary either. I don't want to make you think that it is. I did choose to go the college route in my life, but young believers who listen to the show and you're actually wanting to get married young and you know not quite sure what you want to uh, do as far as, as furthering your education post high school, um, I would say that college is not necessary. There are ways to make, make lots of money that don't involve college. You just have to find one of those that you are okay with doing for the rest of your life. Um, and And so... Um, if, if they do, if they decide that they don't want to any of those roads and they do want to go to college, um, then I would say, okay, well, you're going to want to go to the college that's going to pay you to go. You're not going to want to go to any college that is going to require you to go into debt because that's not a way to start your married life. Uh, so go to the place that pays you and not to the place that, you know, you pay number one, that's the biggest rule I would say. Uh, and number two, um, yeah, you're going to have to have a, a means of making enough money to pay utilities and food and housing. Um, and so if you have a place that is, you have access to free, uh, housing that that's great, right? That's one more utility and bill. You don't have to pl- pay. If you have parents who have, you know, a second, um, you know, little small sort of apartment close to their home or some, somewhere that has, you know, electric and water and all this stuff, uh, all the stuff that you would need and they're not going to charge you for it, or they're going to charge you a, you know, a hugely discounted price for it, then absolutely take advantage of that. That's what I would say. If, if not, you're going to have to have a plan for how you're going to sustain your, your wife. Because once you get married, she's your responsibility to take care of. So you need to have a plan for how to make money in order to, um, you know, provide. And so I would say the big answer to this is maybe go to college one at a time. One of you works. One of you goes to school. The person who works pays the bills. The person who goes to school goes to school. And then once one person has got his or her degree, you swap. The other person works, the other person pays the bills, right? Um, That's one way to do it. And my wife and I didn't actually have to do it because I ended up, before I met her, I actually had my livelihood. I was a teacher. Oh, I was, I was actually substitute teaching. And then I I got it. I got married unemployed because a sub job is not happening in the summer. So we got married in the summer and then I got hired that fall um, as a full-time teacher. And so, yeah, I don't know guys. It's just every it's everybody's story is different as far as how you can make money to support your spouse. There are mi- literally millions of ways to make money. And so you just have to find one of those. Uh, you just have to have some way of supporting the new spouse unit, but let's see kind of what Dr. John's reaction is. And then we'll close the episode off. Right. Surviving. Have they made and a budget? So have, you, have you sat down with them to make a budget yet? 
Yep, yep, yep. Working on it now, and also um, handing our daughter some expectations starting in January. Mm-hmm. So while she remains at home, while she adults and moves toward that, she feels what it's like to pay more of her share to start paying her car insurance in yeah. monthly installments. Some of that kind of thing. That's been a point of contention, but. It's what we've done with the other kids. We've just had to accelerate this a bit because she's wanting to get married at 18. Right. Our, our other two two older ones didn't do that that early. We had a different timeline. So we're having to adjust those things as parents, which is, I can tell you, it's been tricky. This is some of the hardest parenting we've done. Yeah. It's, I mean, it sounds like you're navigating it as well as you can. I think a gift to them. So let's take marriage off the table. Let's take something statistically improbable with a high likelihood you get hurt potentially forever and a small sliver of success. Let's say your 17 year old comes to you and says, I'm a world-class athlete and I'm going to the NFL directly from high school. I know there's some laws and rules about that, but let's just pretend they could do that. Uh, Not laws, but there's some regulations and NFL guidelines and things, but let's say they could just do that. You would be failing your kid if you didn't say, okay, the weight room just got real, real serious. Like, like uh, we've been taking it easy on you because you're going to have to get real strong to head out onto that field. The workouts are going to get heavy. The responsibilities are going to, right? So I think it's important to look at this as like, okay, if this is happening, we're going to prepare you in the best way possible. And part of that is letting the 17-year-old know if you're going to make adult decisions, it's going to come with adult um, responsibilities and those responsibilities have consequences to them. So I would be failing you as your dad if I didn't let you have some a taste of that, some practice of that before you make this big decision here. And by the way, um, is she's already thinking about being 18. She's still 17. She's still living in your house. Right? Right. So, Six more months. Yes. How, how many? Six more months before 18. Yep. Golly, can I tell you, I've, I, this is not the right answer, but I have a real thing in my gut right now that, well, I think this would be not probably wise parenting. You're, you're hearing me go through this in real time, okay? And I've got several competing things in my mind. I'm just going to speak them out loud. Is that okay? Please. Thank you. Thing number one is if you got six months, part of me would want to go scorched earth. You can't have contact with this person. I'm cutting off your phone. Like you used to live in my house. And if you want to leave after six months, knock your lights out. And I know the hipster cool thing to do would be like, well, you just got to accept it. So let's just ride this out. And I, part of me says, no, you're 17. You're my child. And I see the semi coming down the road at you. And I'm going to shove you out of the way with two hands. And you may even break your arm when you fall, but I'm going to protect you from that car. Dang. Okay, Dr. John. Well, to compare a semi coming down the road to your child's decision to get married, I think is a little bit of a stretch. I know that they're 17. I know that they're moving towards the, you know, the age of adulthood that um, they can drive and they can move out and all this stuff. But, I, you know, I, I've presented a lot of evidence today as to why getting married young is a good idea. It doesn't, it's not a decision that young people make impulsively or without a reason. And so, to compare the choice to get married young to a, an actual, you know, semi truck hitting you, I think is, is ridiculous. I mean, let's, let's be real here. Um, <laughs> there are lots of reasons to not want to postpone marriage too. He hasn't covered those again. You're, you're solidifying, you know, you know, your routines, your own habits are becoming basically more ingrained in the way you do things. And upon entering marriage, you're going to have to deconstruct more of yourself in order to merge and become one person with this other individual. And a lot of people can't do that because they're not mature enough to do that. And so that causes their marriage problems. They end up getting, you know, divorced soon after getting married in their thirties. If they, if they choose to wait that long into their thirties or forties to get married, then, you know, they're going to have problems because they want to do it their way. You know, an old dog can't learn new tricks. So that's a big problem with postponing marriage. Another problem with postponing marriage is basically, hey, young people, what's your plan for sexual health? Because most of the plans that I hear for sexual health from young people involve hookup culture, uh, porn, things that are very extremely unhealthy and actually rather addictive and create really addictive cycles that, you know, become more powerful the more years that you use them. And so I would not encourage people to postpone 
uh, you know, marriage way into their future because most people don't have a good answer for the question, what is your plan for living sexually upright and as a man of conviction between now and the time you get married? Most people can't live a good, a good sexual life, a healthy sexual life that long. And so that's another good reason not to postpone marriage. Number two, do you care about this person and want to spend more of your time with him? Or do you want to spend less of your life with him? You know, people who are okay getting married at an older age, I've never understood how they have a good connection. I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't. You're, you're, you're flat out, bold face admitting, I would actually, you know, like to pursue travel and go get an education and do these awesome things with my time that I can't do as a married person. I would rather do that stuff instead of spend time with my partner uh, and, and, you know, my committed partner, spend more time with him or her. And I've never understood, I don't think those people have a good connection. People who say that there are better things to do uh, in your season of youth than get married are people who have bad relationships. Bold-faced, you know, period, right there. So Dr. John, that's another great reason that getting married young is great, a great thing. You get to spend more of your time with your spouse. And so for all of those reasons, I don't think that getting married young can be compared to a semi-truck hitting you. I think that is, you know, I know that you have data that says that people are quite likely to uh, you know, are heading quite likely are heading for divorce if the younger they get and, you know, getting married young makes your odds of divorce more likely. But, you know, I also know that I am not a statistic. I'm not a number. I'm not like other people. I have control over the choices that I make. If I'm mature and I'm aware of the danger of getting married young, I can absolutely enter that and be capable of, you know, making a wise decision when challenges come knocking and realizing, hey, yeah, I could bail. I could bail and suffer and ruin everyone's life around me, or I could mature myself in order to take down this problem with the person that I love. Sheesh. And so, yeah, I, I just don't agree with kind of what he said there. Now, maybe further into this video, he kind of backs off of that, you know, suggestion to this parent to go scorched earth and basically say, you're doing what I say. You live in my house. You're my child. You're not getting married. No contact with this person, by the way, which was insane to me. Like I would never tell my daughter or my son, no contact with the person that you love so much in the world and who you want to love most in the world, who you're moving towards the goal of marriage with the person that you're moving towards the goal of marriage with, by the way, yeah, don't see that person. That seems to me like a good way to blow up a relationship with your child and also a way to blow up and impede any possibility at a relationship with a future son or daughter-in-law that you have. And so I would never not recommend saying that. Now, I don't think Dr. John uh, is actually recommending that because he said he didn't himself think that it was a good idea. So he's probably going to continue on in this video to you know, give you an alternate uh, perspective because as he said, these are just his em emotional reactions, which I, I would argue come from his, uh, you know, past as a counselor. He's probably counseled some couples who instead of wisely entering into marriage young, they rushed into it for wrong reasons. And so he, he's automatically assuming that anyone else he meets who wants to get married young is just as immature as the couples who have come to his office in the past saying, hey, we're headed for a train wreck. And so he's also probably very well of, very well of studies and statistics, which also you know seem to communicate at least some of the studies that I've seen um, that getting married young can be make you more likely to end for end up in divorce. So he's probably aware of all those things, and that's the reason that his emotional reaction is coming into play. And instead of listening to actually the attitude with which these young people are entering this new season of life and maturing early and spending more of their life together as, as a loving couple and all of this, he just hears the couples that he's been counseling in his office in the past. And so I think that's kind of my under point of understanding for him here. And uh, reach out and let me know what you think it is, though. I actually am out of time. So I hope you guys have enjoyed these episodes. I can't get his next, Dr. John's next thoughts, but I will include the video that I reviewed today in the link in the show notes. If you want to finish this video by Dr. John and kind of tell me, reach out and tell me what his concluding thoughts were, um, I would love to hear that. I've seen this video myself, so I want to just hear your perspective on it, but reach out and let me know what, kind of what he went on to say and your thoughts on it. I would love to hear that. Again, re by reaching out to me like that, um, through uh, actually, you can't even use the link in the show notes. I just discovered this this week um, that Anchor removed the voice message button, and so you can no longer send me a personalized audio voice message through the link in the show notes. Instead, just go to Facebook or Instagram, go to the show, and just click that little microphone by the text box and then send me a voice message there. I would love to hear from you there. Again, it would make me feel super connected to you as an audience member. It would make this podcasting system two way. Uh, you can also follow the restoring report podcast on Instagram and social media, uh, Facebook, if you're interested in the content we post there as well. So thank you guys so much for listening today, reach out and say hi, and I will talk to you next time.